you should totally try out The Thief in Dragon's Dogma 2. We've been playing it a ton and honestly it gets pretty busted especially when you earn the Meister's teaching skills. It becomes a powerhouse for dealing damage, you're extremely survivable and have great utility. We just wanted to really highlight and share how cool this vocation is so you don't miss out on it especially with how easy it is to switch classes. This is one that I would have missed out on if me and 2-6 didn't both try different classes and realize which ones were actually actually insane. In this video, we want to go over some awesome tips and tricks for the thief that will help you out whether you're maining it or not, and you will want to know that having them even as pawns in your party is also massively helpful. These are some of the tips that we've learned so far, but if you have any extra tips yourself, make sure to put them down below so we can all learn together as a community. A really good thing to know first is that just like its name the thief, they are actually able to steal items from enemies and it's the only vocation that we think can actually do this. You can usually do this when the enemy is vulnerable, but a really awesome tip we wish we knew way earlier is that a thief pawn with the plunder skill equipped will actually steal items from enemies automatically. This is crazy useful because the items they can steal includes insane things like fairy stones that are useful throughout the whole game, extra crafting items, and even just extra passive money. The upgraded version of the skill actually increases the chances of rare items being stolen, and if you have more than one pawn in your party, they will be stealing items items all the time. But even with just one, it is still pretty common, so this is something you don't want to miss out on for extra passive goodies. On top of this, you don't even necessarily need the skill equipped because the core skill bump and lift will mean that your carve basic attack will have a low chance to steal from enemies too. Another thing that makes the thief actually insane is the fact that they become basically unkillable with the busted Meister's teaching skill Formless Faint. You get this one after visiting the Nameless Village during the story and it allows the thief to go into a state whereby they dodge any attack automatically and essentially cannot be hit outside of some very rare situations. The formless faint will remain active so long as you have stamina which it will gradually drain, but what makes it even more busted is that you have access to quick use items to top up your stamina and the mage skill such as celestial peon basically gives you infinite stamina anyway. This is already extremely useful stuff. However, the damage output for the thief is also incredible. All you need to do is pick the right skills and there are many good options for the thief, but you should know the skull splitter skill when you get better weapons later on and level this thing up goes absolutely insane for damage output. One execution of this skill will usually deal like half of a large monster's HP like the ogres, cyclopses and griffins and the damage scales based on how high you are when you used it and it has extra utility as sometimes this will allow you to quickly get on the back of an enemy to mount it, making hitting weak points even easier. Another cool skill that also does insane damage is the draw and quarter skill and this can only be used while mounted on a monster but if you do this on a weak point the monsters will usually have a whole health bar are deleted off of them and this is just awesome to pull off for the fun factor let alone the damage. Please try this skill out at least once it does not disappoint. Just in general though, the thief's basic attack damage output is really good and the main mechanic of twin fangs allows you to basically execute any target that's knocked down or unstable, which is great for cutting through those smaller mobs. But one thing the thief really excels at is climbing and clinging. In Dragon's Dogma 2, clinging is extremely useful most of the time as it allows you to deal damage while staying out of harm's way. On top of this, it means you can easily access the weak point of a monster such as their head and eyes. What makes the thief so amazing at clinging and climbing climbing is their twing fang ability that allows you to stab your daggers into an enemy, reducing the stamina loss and automatically retaining grip on a monster when they attempt to shrug you off. This makes clinging basically easy mode and getting to those weak points is so easy. Once you've then unlocked these scarlet kisses, you can quickly and repeatedly stab monsters just by spamming the attack button which does huge damage on those weak points. So with this in mind, something that is busted is when you hire thieves into your party, maybe two or three of them, they will just climb on monsters, stick to the weak points and rack up damage which is insane because normally we can just sit back, watch and enjoy the show as they just destroy everything on the monster including stealing items off of them. The golems can can be annoying if you're running a magic focus class, but having thieves in your party will just have them instantly jump on and destroy those weak points making the fight kind of trivial. 
If the thief's damage wasn't already good enough, it's one of the only classes that can self buff elemental damage onto their weapon via the ignited blades and blade of the pyre skills. While you probably don't need to use this if you have a mage in your party as they can cast elemental boons on you, it's a great option if you want to run an alternative party setup full of thieves to focus more on damage. With it being fire damage as well, it means a large majority of the monsters in the game that are weak to fire will be very easy to deal with because it's a common weakness. Now you might think the thieves being a fully melee focused class will have trouble with aerial targets like harpies, but they excel here again. The implicate skill allows them to quickly pull harpies down out of the air, and then you can follow up with twin fang to dispatch them with ease, and it basically automatically locks you onto them, so long as you're facing their direction making it very easy to use. Another cool thing is that you can use this on bigger targets when they're stumbling, and although we have found this to be inconsistent depending on where you're standing, it's still a good thing to use and have on any pawns in your party. Seeing them yeet a target out of the air just makes it so much easier for other melee classes that don't have aerial options. And then there are enemies in the game with hardened shells which make melee vocations bounce off of them, but with the powder bomb skill on a thief you can easily deal with this scenario by placing a powder bomb on the target, waiting until they walk over to it or stick them onto it directly, and then detonate. This will then cause them to normally become turned over, becoming vulnerable to your attack so you can quickly execute them. So as you can see the thief is pretty insane. Share any extra tips you have down below so we can all learn together and subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 coming your way very soon.